Welcome back to Beg, Borrow, Steal, and welcome to our Barcelona apartment. I've decided to rent rather than buy. It will make it easier to move on when we get sacked. I spend many of my evenings here just trying to teach myself a little bit of Catalonian because it turns out the players are none too happy. I've been pronouncing most of their names wrong. It turns out that Arno, whose company actually wants to be called Campeña. It turns out that Old Fruity Pastels wants to be called Pasteas. It even turns out that I couldn't get Geordie's name right. He wants to be called Zordi. So I'm trying to pronounce their names a little bit better in training. But how long will we be here? Because we are now 10 games into the season and we've got the same result in eight of those fixtures. But have we lost eight games? Have we drawn eight games? Or have we won eight games? Let's get into the episode and find out. Okay, how many of you had eight wins in the sweepstake? Not that many, I don't mind wagering, but we've been doing pretty good so far. When this campaign began, I saw an 18-team division with five relegation places and us predicted to finish down there in 16th. And I thought we were in for a season of toil and struggle. The first 10 games have gone absolutely swimmingly. We're one point clear at the top of the table. The team we are ahead of, Numanthia, are a serious outfit. And we've actually beaten them in one of our early games. In fact, when I show you how we've been doing, I think you might be quite impressed. It wasn't until game week nine that we actually suffered a defeat. It wasn't until the seventh match of the season that we even conceded a goal. I thought our defence might be the most difficult part of our team to piece together. But old Smitty has come in and he has got those boys playing back there. Granted, a lot of these wins have been pretty narrow. We had a 1-0 win in our opening episode live in front of you. We followed that up with what I think was our best result so far this season, a 3-0 win. But then we drew 0-0, three 1-0 victories on the bounce. And when we beat Numanthia 1-0, I thought we might be in business because they are a really good side. But after that, we got a 3-1 win, a 2-1 win, a disappointing 1-0 defeat to the B team of Huethka. But in our most recent game, we did concede what looked like a late equaliser, but from the kickoff and with our mentality pushed up to attack, we just went straight up the other end and scored a nice finish from just inside the box, which means we've got eight wins from our 10 games and we've not been conceding many goals. We've not been scoring many either. But I think you could say this is a pretty decent start. Unfortunately, it is not all rosy in the Europa Garden. We've been suffering a few injuries. It's getting harder to get a competitive 11 out on the pitch. And a couple of our lone players have been recalled, which is what has meant that we're not quite as tight defensively. Our ball-winning midfielder was Juan Villacava. He was here and we were contributing 30% of his wages, but we weren't able to remove the clause in his loan contract that his parent club could recall him. If we did remove that clause, they wanted us to pay a greater percentage of his wages and we couldn't afford to. Well, he started the season like a house on fire for us. In his six appearances, he got an average rating of 7.47. And that meant that his parent club decided to call him back and there was nothing that we could do about it. I don't know why they called him back. They've not played him since. And they're willing to loan him back to us now. But we'd have to contribute a greater percentage of his weekly wage than we were before. And unfortunately, we can't afford it. So he has gone back. The other player who's gone back is Alessini Karoma. They were unhappy that we were playing him on the right wing rather than the left wing. They came for a chat with us and I said, why are you concerned? At least he's playing. Not even that good. Well, they were unhappy in the next week. They recalled him and that's left us very, very short of wide players. As we'll find out in a moment as via Carver's replacement. We have bought in Totti to play in the midfield, except it's not the Totti. This is a 19-year-old Spaniard that we have on loan from Hatafe, who again is another central midfielder who is not spectacular, but looks solid as a ball-winning midfielder. He can pass a ball a bit. He can run around a little bit. His strength is not great. Neither is his concentration when he's playing a more defensive role. Aside from that, He's solid. He's come in and played the last two games. We're missing Via Carver, if I'm honest. 
But we've got to make do with what we've got. We're going to show you the lineup and our tactic in a moment. But first, I think we need to get to our next community vote because we've got a decision to make. And the dilemma we've got is this. Cash seems to be in incredibly short supply in the Spanish lower leagues. We don't have any great revenue streams in terms of TV deals, sponsorships, or even gate receipts. And with the wages that we're paying, we are hemorrhaging cash. We're already £50,000 overdrawn. I estimate we could be half a million pounds in the red by the end of the season. So what are we going to do about it? The dilemma is this. Do we continue to operate? are very close to our wage budget, even though it's going to push us further overdrawn and hope that that's going to help us climb the leagues and maybe unearth a gem or two that we might be able to sell on in the future. Or should we actually start to operate a little bit below the maximum wage budget that the board have set us in the knowledge that clearly the club is not sustainable with the wage budgets that they are giving us? And I do fear that as we start to get more and more overdrawn, the board may well start selling off our players when derisory offers come in, which might leave us very short. So let us know down in the community tab on the channel homepage, what do you think we should do? Carry on operating close to our maximum wage budget, even though we're going to be turning a considerable loss every year. Or do we start making some cutbacks at the end of this season trying to recover some of these lost finances and allow the club to break even. Let us know in the vote. We'll go with whatever you decide. And now let's jump into that tactic before we get out there for today's game. Okay, so today we are up against Formentera, who are in eighth place in the division. And it would be great to snag another win and let the bandwagon carry on rolling. The tactic that you voted on has performed heroic so far, given our defensive limitations to have kept six clean sheets in the opening six fixtures was nothing short of miraculous and we've not conceded more than one goal in any of our games. I think the halfback has been absolutely key. Alberto played incredibly well when he was there. Okay, he is on the decline, but his performances have been good. He's gone back into central defence to help us out because we did have an injury to old Arno Campenia, but he's back and fit enough to be on the bench today, but we're going to keep Prats in there as our halfback. He's come in and he's played pretty well. I don't like his determination and I don't like his strength, and he seems to fall over fairly frequently, but he's performed reasonably filling in in that role. We've got Totti as our ball-winning midfielder. He's played two games so far, not look great in either of those games, but needs must. Our other lone central midfielder, Hamza El Hachi, has well, he's been a lot better. He scored two penalties, three goals in total. He's averaging above a seven. And looks pretty dynamic in those central areas. But we do have an injury problem today. Zordi is out. He's going to be out for another week or so. He's played really well so far this season. He's got five goals and an assist. In his nine starts, his 10 appearances, and we are woefully, woefully short out in the wide areas. I toyed with the idea of maybe playing a left winger who can't play on the right and putting him out there instead. I also thought about maybe playing Alphonse Serra out there as an inside forward. He can finish and he's quick, but he could be. A little bit out of his depth, having never played that position. So we're going to play Mr. Loverman instead. Shaver came on as a substitute when Zordi got injured in the last game. He's quick. And that's pretty much it. He can't cross. He can't dribble. He can't really pass. And he's got very poor vision. In fact, apart from that pace, there's not really a lot about his game. But he is Mr. Loverman. So we're going to put him out there today just before kickoff. I think I might make a tweak, though. I think I might change him to a conventional winger rather than an inside forward and see whether we can get away with playing him out there today and still get a win. Okay, so the teams are out and lining up. We're about to get underway. We've made that little switch. Mr. Loverman has gone as a winger rather than an inside forward. It's the first time we've made any changes to our tactics this season. Hopefully it won't disrupt things too much. We've gone down in the box early. Thought Jimenez might have won a penalty, but 
The highlight continues. Here's Guti. He has been a great outlet for us. A fullback on attack. And Mr. Loverman actually comes in at the far post and has an effort early on in the game. Santiago saves it. The highlight continues and we pick the ball up again. We've thrown the ball forward and we've given it away. This is a little bit of a breathtaking start to the game and we're in trouble now. Sergio manages to just tip it wide. And we actually look a little bit more open at the back than we have done at any point this season. Bit of a breathtaking start this. Sergio's claimed the ball now. And finally, we get a little bit of a respite. Paul Mentor have started the game pretty brightly. We've had two shots, both of them on target. We're into the highlights again already. We need to win this ball back encounter. We've got it now. And Mr. Loverman has been involved quite a lot early on. He's got Pastea overlapping along the right-hand side. Can we get the ball into the box? It's not the best ball in the world. Jimenez is going to get it. This little guy has not been as good as Zordi has over on the right-hand side. Considering the preseason he had, I've been a little bit disappointed. Totti has his first positive involvement since we bought him in on loan. And he's won us a corner. We're going to scoop it over onto the six-yard box. Goot, he's got it. He can turn. He's lashed it home. We've got our first goal from a corner. Jeff down in the comments is going to be proud of that one. Jimenez has sent in a ball across the edge of the six-yard box. It's fallen to Guti, one of our taller players. He has turned on a bank vault and lashed one past the keeper. Now that's looking a little bit better, isn't it? And Guti's on the ball again into the midfield. We've got it out to Jimenez. He's only five foot five. He's a sprightly little figure out there. Links up well with Guti. We'd like to see a little bit more output from him in terms of goals and assists. Here's Totti, and Totti's actually playing his best game so far. Here is the man we want more from. He's gone back to Guti. Now it's Totti again. And I tell you what, Totti is having his best game by far. He's done more in the opening 12 and a half minutes of this encounter than he did in the previous 180 minutes he's played for the club. And Jimenez is looking a bit more dangerous now. He turns back, gives it to Guti. The two central midfielders combine. And Totti just plays a low effort past the keeper. We're 2-0 up after 12 minutes. And we're looking pretty strong. We're looking at Mr. Loverman, by the way. He's pulling a 6.9. Not bad for a player who is really a right back. An attacking right back, if I'm honest. But a right back nonetheless. And we're putting them under more pressure. Here's our half back. And there's our three central midfielders all linking up. We've got all the space here. And Jimenez tries to get on the end of it. And Totti has been booked pretty early. But he is at the heart of everything. He's pulling strings left, right and centre. He's like Stratovarius in the midfield. And we might get the ball to him on the edge of the box again. This time it's our other central midfielder. It's raining goals from the edge of the box. We're 3-0 up. 25 minutes into the game. Let's be honest. We could not have wished for a better start than this. Guti's involved again. Jimenez has come alive this match. And rather than lay it off to the right to Totti, this time El Hachi arcs one into the corner. And I tell you what, 25 minutes to go and we are looking strong. The XG is looking pretty even. I guess because a couple of our goals have come from outside the box. So weren't really great chances. Maybe it would be nice to see if we could now create some good clear cut efforts. The board have given us an A star rating so far. But one of the things they were a little bit cautious about was that our wing play system wasn't producing very attractive football. I guess our XGs have not been the highest and we've been winning lots of games 1-0. So maybe they're right to have some concerns, but we're definitely getting the results. We've approached half time. It's time to give them a pat on the back. We'll see you for the second half. OK, we are back underway. I did notice at half time that Shava's rating is now down to a 6.7. And he hasn't been involved too much since those early stages. So he's the player we're keeping an eye on. Everybody else is playing pretty strong, although Pasteus at right back, he's not having a great evening either. 
So I tell you what, I think we might make a change. It could be both of those players that we switch around, try and bring on some fresh legs, see if we can score a fourth. Okay, we're back underway. We made a brace of changes. We've moved Mr. Loverman to right back where he's more comfortable playing. We've brought Sarah on as a right-sided player, though he's never played there in his entire career. And we made a change up front as well because Solsona was on a 6.4. So we've brought the Ecuadorian Medina on for the last half an hour of the game. He has been, by the way, pretty woeful since we brought him in on loan. And we've now conceded again. That's five games on the bounce that we've conceded a goal. That Mandina has been no kind of backup striker at all. In fact, we've struggled for goals. Sorsana scored in the opening two fixtures and has not scored since. And we've not really had a lot of goals from the attacking players. It's been the wide men and the central midfielders that have been chipping in far more. And there's a little chance from a free kick and it's now gone out for a corner. We're going to have another one of these attacking set plays. Can we get on the end of another one? It gave us a goal in the first half as Jimenez whips another ball in. This time it's cleared and Totti is chasing it. The highlight continues. We're still in with a chance. Guti could beat his man and whip a ball in and he has. We don't really have any height in there that's going to threaten a back line. We've got about 14 minutes left, I think. We've got another change ahead of us. Let's see if we can just see this game out for a comfortable 3-1 win. Okay, 10 minutes to go. We've made our final change. Just one in central midfield, just to give us a bit more legs to try and see out the game. We've not mustered an XG of one in that fixture. And we've scored three goals. I'm tempted to say it's another game when we've not looked that convincing, but we've got a result again. We'll tell the boys it was good just to keep the morale up. If we have a look at the table, it's going to see us still top of the league. It looks like Numanthia might have struggled in their game. In fact, if we have a little look, they've drawn nil-nil with Tarasa. So that now gives us a three-point lead at the top of the table. It's time for us to go off and play another chunk of fixtures when we see you next time. Well, we'll be more than 20 games into the season. We'll be past the halfway point. The question is, will we still be near the top of the table as we attempt to beg, borrow and steal our way out of this division?